While everyone can name Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates as the richest men in the world, asking them to name the richest women in the world is either going to leave them speechless or have them mention Oprah and Rihanna. Surprisingly, however, Oprah and Rihanna are nowhere near the richest women in the world, and even Jeff Bezos' ex-wife Mackenzie Scott was barely able to make it to the top five. So who is the mysterious Amazonian at the top? How have all these women amassed their fortune, and most importantly, how do they spend it? Let's find out. Number 7. Suzanne Clatton Starting off today's list is Suzanne Clatton. Suzanne Clatton has a net worth of $23.7 billion and amassed most of her wealth from her inheritance. Suzanne owns almost 20% of BMW, the German manufacturer of luxury vehicles, is the sole owner of Atlanta AG, and also holds key positions in SGL Group and Entrust. Most of her fortune is the result of her BMW share. However, Suzanne hasn't been sitting around doing nothing. Using her skills as an economist, thanks to her being an MBA, Susanna transformed Atlanta AG into the pharmaceutical giant it is today. Suzanne doesn't use her wealth to buy flashy cars like Elon. Instead, she buys real estate and focuses on being a better managerial figure. Many believe that we are permanently sitting around on a yacht in the Mediterranean, Clatton told Germany's manager magazine in a rare interview with her younger brother. The role as a guardian of wealth also has personal sides that aren't so nice. Her brother Quant said, For both of us, it's certainly not the money that drives us, said Quant. Above all, it is the responsibility of securing jobs in Germany. Good billionaires for a change, who would have thought? Number 6. Miriam Adelson The richest Israeli in the world, Miriam Adelson, has a net worth of $25.4 billion and a rags-to-riches story to match. Miriam Adelson was born in Palestine and after studying microbiology and genetics decided that she wanted to become a doctor too. All this happened in New York and it was in the US that she met her husband. Adelson's husband, Sheldon Adelson, was a business tycoon, but it was Miriam's idea to turn one of his buildings into a Venetian-styled casino that really made him a billionaire. Sheldon used Miriam's idea and turned it into a $48 billion empire under the name of the Las Vegas Sands Casino. After Sheldon's death, half of this insane fortune became hers, and boy has she used it the way she wanted. Miriam is a staunch Zionist and has donated hundreds of millions of dollars to right-wing politicians and organizations to further Israel's goals. For instance, they donated $180 million to GOP campaigns and PACs in 2020 alone. Of course, such efforts have not gone unrewarded. The couple recorded a big win when former President Donald Trump relocated the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Trump also awarded Miriam a Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2018. Miriam likes to spend her wealth on charities and to help people. For example, she's been an active donor in clinical research against addiction. In 2003, she established Dr. Miriam and Sheldon G. Adelson Medical Research Foundation, which supports innovative medical research. The foundation has awarded more than $180 million in grants to date. Number 5. Gina Reinhardt With a net worth of $28.6 billion, Gina Reinhardt is the richest woman in Australia and has gained the majority of her fortune through her control of Hancock Prospecting, which, as you probably guessed it, she inherited from her father. Gina's father came upon his fortune by accident. Hancock was a farmer and bush pilot. One day, while dodging a storm, he spotted red color leaking from a nearby gorge. He suspected that this might be iron, and upon further inspection, found iron ores with higher iron concentration than the ones found in the US. After some political lobbying and a few contracts later, Hancock was making millions and billions in royalties. 
Using his millions, Hancock bought two newspapers and was soon making connections left and right. His empire, however, soon saw a decline as his health started to take a nosedive. And after his death, Gina had to rebuild everything. Now Hancock Prospecting is one of the most successful mining companies in the world and is responsible for most of Gina's wealth. Unlike her father, who loved being in the public spotlight and used his newspapers to do just that, Gina shies away from being on stage and instead voices her opinions in her writing. She was even banned from visiting Russia when she said the war in Ukraine is a reminder that Australia should be more determined to build up defense. One of 121 people in Australia who have just been indefinitely banned from Russia by the Kremlin's foreign ministry, Reinhardt has released a statement saying, Much as I have very nice Russian friends and enjoyed very much my two visits to St. Petersburg and would love to revisit, I would not wish to do so if not welcomed or if I have concerns for my safety. If speaking out in the manner above means I can never visit Russia again in my lifetime, so be it, she said. Now that is a strong girl boss right there. Number 4. Mackenzie Scott Perhaps the most successful divorcee in history, Mackenzie Scott is the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos, the second richest man in the world. She has a net worth of $31.5 billion and is arguably the most philanthropic billionaire the world has seen in recent times. Mackenzie Scott received 25% of Jeff Bezos' Amazon stocks after it was revealed that he was cheating on her. And almost immediately after gaining her literal truckload of cash, she announced that she was going to give it all away to people that deserved it more. Mackenzie has donated more than $6 billion in just 2020 and is not planning to stop anytime soon. According to her, she's going to give away until she has nothing left to give. Her ex-husband could learn a thing or two from her. Back in July 2020, she wrote on her medium that she is determined to give the majority of my wealth back to the society that helped generate it to do it thoughtfully, to get started soon, and to keep at it until the safe is empty. She added, this work is ongoing and will last for years. Unlike most billionaire philanthropists that make a big deal out of their donations and use them as a way to get points with the public, Mackenzie Scott tries to keep her donations hidden and donates to schools helping underprivileged minorities. Scott wrote, People struggling against inequities deserve center stage in stories about change they are creating. This is equally, perhaps especially, true when their work is funded by wealth. Any wealth is a product of a collective effort that included them. The social structures that inflate wealth present obstacles to them. And despite those obstacles, they are providing solutions that benefit us all. It was reported that by June of 2021, she had donated over $2.75 billion to over 286 groups in just six months. So far, Mackenzie Scott has donated over $12 billion in the span of three years. From being broke to helping every person she could, Mackenzie Scott has come a long way. What a role model. Number 3. Jacqueline Mars I want you to think about this billionaire's last name. What does the word Mars remind you of? The planet or the chocolate? If you said chocolate, you're both hungry and right. Miss Jacqueline Mars is the owner of the Mars confectionery brand. Her grandfather started the brand and she inherited her fortune from the success of her brand's sugary blockbusters. Jacqueline Mars has a net worth of $43.4 billion, and almost all of it was amassed using the Mars brand. She also owns the McLean. The Virginia-based closely held company makes candy, M&M, Snickers, Milky Way, chewing gum, Juicy Fruit, Orbit, Pet Chow, Pedigree, Whiskers, and packaged foods, Ben's Original and Suzy One. She is the real sugar mama, if you ask me. 
The Mars brand had a revenue of $40 billion in 2021 and is considered the largest candy maker in the world. Chances are that every candy you like comes from Jacqueline Mars's brands. Her scandals, however, aren't as sweet as her candies. In 2013, she was involved in a car accident where she fell asleep behind the wheel. The resulting crash killed one person and caused a pregnant woman to miscarry. Jacqueline pleaded guilty to the misdemeanor. Surprisingly, no drugs were found in her system, and it turned out to be a case of bad luck. As for her spendings, Jacqueline Mars is a pretty private person, and the only record of her private spending indicates that she is an avid supporter of Going Green and regularly donates to the League of Conservation Voters, an organization aimed at supporting the introduction of better environmental laws. Number 2. Alice Walton Alice Walton is the owner of Walmart. It's right there in her last name. Did you make the connection? No? Well, don't beat yourself up over it. Chances are even more weird named billionaires will join our list in the future, so you can try again with them. Now, as for our Walmart billionaire, Alice Walton, she has a net worth of $56.6 billion. Walmart is a $572.8 billion business, and while Alice Walton is a co-owner of it, she seems to be more interested in other things. Instead of focusing on growing her Walmart wealth, she chooses to focus on art and her passions. Don't get me wrong, Alice isn't lazy and chooses to do nothing. She already proved her worth after she set up her own bank after getting an MBA. She later sold the bank and decided to relax a bit. Nowadays, she likes to splurge seven digits to get art pieces that catch her eyes and has also donated tens of millions of dollars to fund community projects. Mostly, however, she just likes to lead a quiet life on her 3,200-acre ranch where she breeds horses. Prize-winning horses, that is. According to her, the secret to breeding great horses is the three Bs bones, brains, and balance. If you look at art, it shares some of the same qualities. Number 1. Francois Betancourt Mayers With a net worth of $65.4 billion, Francois Betancourt Mayers is the richest woman in the world. Her family owns 33% of L'Oreal. The entire amount is attributed to her because she's chairwoman of the family's holding company. Betancourt has written books on Greek mythology and also founded the Betancourt Schuler Foundation in 1987, which donates to science research, humanitarian causes, and the arts. Details of her spendings aren't publicly available, as the L'Oreal owner rarely steps into the public spotlight. However, the fact that her mother, Liliane Betancourt, was a fan of lavish spending when it comes to gifts did come forward during a 2007 trial. Francois Betancourt argued that her mother was being taken advantage of and people were using her weakened mental state to steal their inheritance. An out-of-court settlement was reached and the details of that are unknown. If you liked today's video, make sure to watch my other video on the richest people in history. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.